This is crazy. So Oracle Database 12.2. It's close to 25 million lines of C code. <laughs> it's a lot of code. Oh, what an unimaginable horror. You can't change a single line of code in the product without breaking thousands of existing tests. Generations of programmers have worked on that code under difficult deadlines and filled the code with all kinds of crap. Very complex pieces of logic, memory management, context switching, etc. are all held together with thousands of flags. The whole code is written with mysterious macros that one cannot decipher without picking a notebook and expanding relevant paths or path, paths of the macro by hand. It can take day or two days to really understand what a macro does. Sometimes one needs to understand the values and effects of 20 different flags to predict how the code would behave in different situations. Sometimes hundreds too. I'm not exaggerating. You know, when I read something like this, there's two things that come to mind. The first thing that comes to mind is, isn't it wild that a project can live over this long, that literally a generation of programmers have come and gone during its lifetime? Like that, that's kind of just like wild to think about. That's not, and it's not even just a 10-year-old project or a 20-year-old project. I mean, how old is this project? This project is, what, Oracle DB is 80s? Late 70s? Like when did, when did or, uh, Oracle, Oracle DB... Uh, get uh, let's see, created. I thought it was. I thought it was really okay. Generating. Okay, well they're saying June sixteenth, nineteen seventy seven. Just think about that for a second. That is almost fifty years of programming gone into a singular project. BSD Unix wants a word. Well, you got to remember that Unix doesn't have to move at the same speed because Unix isn't a commercial product. To be completely fair, commercial products versus other products, they get they get they get different. You know, they get different treatment. But I also, when I when I see this, you know what it also makes me think about? People complain about Linus being too mean. But you know what also happens when you have someone that's really mean and concerned about code quality over the course of 50 years? You don't have this. I'm just saying, you don't have this problem if you have someone that's kind of mean. You have to steer the ship, okay? Linus has been steering the Linux ship for how long now? Get out of my base, you get out of my code base, you filthy casual. Yeah, you, I mean, it's it, every communication you see from Linus is just crazy. In fact, I'm pretty sure I just got done bookmarking one that's just absolutely just unhinged and so amazing. And where is my bookmarks? There you go. Look at this. <laughs> we got one right here. Let's see. Look at this. Mario, shut the fuck up. It's a bug, all right? In the kernel. How have you, let's see, how long have you been a maintainer and you still haven't learned the first rule of kernel maintenance? If a change results in a user program breaking, it's a bug in the kernel. We never, ever blame the user programs. How hard can this be to understand? To make matters worse, commit this thing is clearly, to clearly total and utter crap, even if it didn't break applications. E Enoent is not a valid error to return from IO control. By the way, Enoent returning from IO control is crazy. IO controls is operations over existing files. Enoent means no, no such file or directory. Right? Never has, let's see, never has, let's see, never has been, never will be. Enoent means no such file or directory and is for path operations. IO controls are done on files that have already been opened. There's no way in hell that Enoent would ever be valid. Facts. Facts upon facts right there. Uh, so, on first glance, this doesn't sound like a regression, but instead it looks like Pulse Audio slash Tumbleweed has some serious bugs and are regressions. Okay, to be completely fair though, I will, like in, Mar in, in Morio's defense, Pulse Audio is a bug. So like, I mean, I can't argue with his assessment right here. No one can say something bad about it. Yeah, to be frank, a Pulse Audio is a turd. So, I mean, that's W. I'm not sure how to say his name, Morio. I'm going to just say Mor uh, Moro. Moro. It's a me. It's a me, Mario. I know, dude. I got it wrong. Moro. I'm going to call him Moro. Shut up, Moro. I don't think, and I don't ever want to hear that kind of obvious garbage and idiocy from a kernel maintainer again. Seriously. I'd wait for Raphael's patch to go through you. But I have another error report in my mailbox of all KDE media applications being broken by V3.8 uh, RC1. And I bet it's the same kernel bug. And you've shown yourself not to be competent in this issue. So I'll apply it directly and immediately myself. We do not break user space. All right. So anyways, I just wanted to throw out a little bit of Linus. Yeah. Again. He's a very confrontational guy, right? He's, he, he's deep in the confrontational. Uh, my confrontational thought is that many talented programmers tend to be a little uh, prissy bitches, and you need 
an iron-fisted dictator to keep everyone on the same page for decades. I like when Linus defenestrates people. Yeah, I, I think it's I, the problem about code, and I, I kind of have realized why things are so difficult when it comes to to maintaining code and all that. And this is kind of something I've just been jamming about in my head for the last little bit. Why can't I create a new? I've just been kind of thinking about why is it so hard to maintain code? The reason is, is that whenever you're looking at someone else's code, you're not just looking at a series of operations in order in some sort of linear order. No, it's not that. What you're really looking at is how do they shape their underlying program? How are they storing all their values? How are those values mutating over time? And one small piece is just extremely hard to be able to understand how this is actually happening. And so I realized something that's really, really important, which is that every piece of code is crap. And so when I hear people talk about how much crap this is, a lot of times what I think about is that it's not that the code is crap. It's that your understanding of it is crap. But somehow, in very special circumstances, code actually does become crap. And I think we actually have a nice piece of crap code. You know what I mean? But to be fair, to be completely fair, this thing existing for 50 years did not have any of the modern goodnesses. And it's also just C. C doesn't have, I mean, you got void star. It's like, that's your goodness. That's what you get. You got, you got plus plus operator and you got, and you got void star. There's like nothing else. Okay. All right, here, here is how li uh, the life of an Oracle database developer is. Start working on a new bug. Spend two weeks trying to understand 20 different flags that interact in mysterious ways to cause this bug. Uh, add one more flag to handle a new special scenario. <laughs> add a few more lines of code that checks this flag and works around the problematic solutions and avoids the bug. Submit the change to the test farm consisting of 100 to 200 servers that would compile the code, build a new Oracle DB, and run millions of tests in a distributed fashion. Go home. Come the next day and work on something else. The test can take 20 hours to 30 hours to complete. Go home, come the next day, and check on your farm test results. On a good day, there would be about 100 failing tests. On a bad day, there would be about 1,000 failing tests. Pick up some of these tests randomly and try to understand what went wrong with your assumptions. Maybe there was 10 more flags to consider to truly understand the nature of the bug. Add a few more flags in an attempt to fix the issue. Submit the changes again for testing. Wait another 20 to 30 hours. Rinse and repeat for another two weeks until you get a mysterious incantation of the com combination of flags right. Finally, one day you would succeed with zero test failing. Add hundreds more tests for your new change to ensure that the next developer who has the misfortune of touching this new piece of code never ends up breaking your fix. Submit the work for one final round of testing, then submit it for review. The review itself may take another two weeks to two months. So now, move on to the next bug to work on. After two weeks or uh, to two months, when everything is complete, the code would finally be merged into the main branch. The above is a non-exaggerated description of the life of a programmer in Oracle fixing a bug. Now imagine what horror is going, uh, it is going to be to develop a new feature. It takes six months to a year, sometimes two years, to develop a single small feature. Say something like adding a new mode of authentic uh, authentication, like support for ad authentication. The fact that this product even works is nothing short of a miracle. I don't work for Oracle anymore. We'll never work for Oracle again. All right, Netflix story time. Um, the television code base consists of about, if I if I remember this correctly, about 2,200 tests that run. Let me tell you a little something about the old test runner that I was working on. Uh, right before I left, we were trying to make it so that it's not terrible. And when I first was running it, about 78% of the tests would fail just due to environment. About 10 to 20% of the tests would just silently never run. And so for you to find out if your change caused a regression, I would run the tests, and I'd get about somewhere between somewhere between 200 failures, 20 to 200 failures. Then I'd run all the tests again. Then I'd look at all the failures and see if there's any overlap. Then I'd run the failed tests again, and then half of them would just go away. And then I would run those tests again, and then another half would go away. Then I'd run the remaining little chunk, and then those halves would go away. By the way, every testing cycle would take about 45 minutes. So after about two to three days of just running tests, I'd finally get a green check mark. And then someone would merge something into TV, and it'd rerun my test, and then I'd go back to a red X because, well, it, it reran the test again, which then thus made everything fail. So what I would do is I would just merge with the red check mark. That's they call it the red check, baby, okay? The red check, it's the only way. And for there is so many broken merges. And one time I actually merged a problem, 
And someone sent me a message being like, why'd you merge a lint break? And I was just like, oh, what? I didn't even realize part of the red check or the red X was because there was also a lint check that I failed. Just because there were so many failing tests that I just like, I couldn't even see, I couldn't even see the thing, right? You're like blind to things failing. You're just blind. You're just absolutely blind to it. And so, you know, what can you do? So I feel for this guy. Like this, this somehow sounds like a way worse version. I remember also one time I was adding, I was looking at, we have a logger at Netflix and it's all just meta programming for the internal C++ uh, logger. That's it. Couldn't they uh, separate unstable tests into a separate pipeline? No, the test runner was the thing that was unstable. Anyways, so there's a logger that I, I went to go look at. And I kid you not, I spent three days looking at a logger. And I, after three days of looking at a logger that was all template programming, I couldn't figure it out. Like, I, 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 I could not figure it out. I just gave up. I gave up and just went and solved the problem a different way. The logger's name, Log4J? No. Netflix internal logger. I, I actually couldn't. I, I wanted to so bad understand the code. I just felt like I could. I really felt like I could understand it, and I couldn't. So log was just macros, macros upon macros upon macros. It was templates and it was templates and macros. So templated macros is um is its own unique version of hell. Unique in the sense that you can print it out all day and you cannot figure it out. How do you keep motivation to work on that? That's part of your job. It's not like, you know, they are paying me great money to do it. And, you know, I, I'm not a great C++ programmer. So I thought, okay, I could become a better C++ programmer by understanding this. I, it turns out I actually couldn't. I just had to give up instead. So it turns out I wasn't actually smart. It, it did hurt a little bit. Templates and macros saw a lot of that shit. Dude, it is. It's awful. It's awful. It's, it's truly awful. But I, I understand also that you got to remember that when that for a long time, Netflix's code base wasn't even like C++ 11. You know, we only were like half compatible with C++11. You know how there's two versions of C++11? We had like the pre-C++11, C++11, that's not C++11, C++11, if you know what I'm talking about. Like for those that have done it, they know what I'm talking about, how there's the two the two ones. That's what I was. And so that means there's like a bunch of these, the caveman version, yeah. So then we were able to start using like C++14 and stuff. So you can imagine that if you had pre-C++11, C++11, C++ True 11, and then C++ 14, and all the other ones as well, you get this like whole, you get all the different types of coding. So I can feel that. And and the thing is, is that that application is only 15 years old. This application is 50 years old. Okay. And I don't know how good Larry Ellison was at uh, steering the ship early on. It sounds like the, the ship was never steered early on, and no one ever could rewrite it. And so it just continuously became... I mean, this is the result of just one good idea that's gone wrong. And you know what the funny part is? Is that adding a flag for behavior is not a bad thing. Having two flags for behavior, not a bad, it's really not a bad thing. Like, we do it all the time. Like, this is just totally normal. It's just 50, it's just 50 years of being a good citizen. That's all it is. Yeah, that's all C code bases. That's all every code base. It's just, you have to do it more in C code bases because you don't have all the loosey-goosey new modern features, right? Like, Go has structural typing. You can just be like, ah, this mostly looks like the right thing. Toss it in this function. Like, you just can't do that with C, right? You can't. I mean, you can. You can technically void star it and then cast it into something, and then it's just it's just wild. The name Caboose? The name Caboose is not something I did, but it's something I didn't do. The name is the primogen.